I am Anil Kumar and here is my favorite test question on introduction to calculus. The question here is determine horizontal asymptotes for the following function f of x equals to x minus 3 divided by square root of x square plus 3x minus 1. You can pause the video, answer the question. And I am sure those of you who have watched my videos carefully can definitely answer this question. Here is my suggestion. When I say determine horizontal asymptotes for the following function, what do I mean? That is the first question, right? Horizontal asymptote, we need to see the behavior of the graph as x approaches positive infinity or when x approaches negative infinity. We say that the horizontal asymptote exists if f of x approaches a value l, right? Now, then the horizontal asymptote will be equal to y equals to l, right? So that is the equation. Now there are times when the function could approach different values also. So I'm just saying, well, f of x equals to a point, let us say m. In that case, horizontal asymptote could be y equals to m, right? So these are uh, the possibilities, right? It may not approach a fixed value. In that case, we say that the horizontal asymptote does not exist. Now let's begin by solving this question and uh, see how to find the horizontal asymptote for such a function. Now we are given f of x equals to x minus 3 over square root of x square plus 3x minus 1. So what I will do here is I'll factor out x square. So when I factor x square I get 1 plus 3 over x, correct, minus 1 over x square. That is what I get under the square root. Now, we have to see what, now let me do one more step and then we'll talk about it. And let's take out this x square outside the square root. Now, what is that equal to? That means within the square root, we have 1 plus 3 over x minus 1 over x squared. Can you tell me outside, do I get x here? That is the question to be answered. Well, those of you who say there should be x, they are wrong. Radical is always positive. The square root is always positive. Do you understand? So if I have minus 7 square, square root, the answer is what? It is not minus 7. It is not x. You get the point? This is indeed equals to uh, 49 and which you should get 7. So you get absolute value of 7, right? Or minus 7 in this case. So the answer is this. Do you get the point? So that makes a huge, huge difference. And that is why sometimes the student get wrong answer for this particular question. Now, let us see how to define absolute x. Now, what we are now considering is when x approaches positive or negative infinity, right? So we'll do that part here. Now, <laughs> let us uh, define absolute x. Absolute x is positive when, so, so let me write, okay, let me write here itself. So what is absolute x? Absolute x is equal to, let's use a different ink equals to x if x is greater than or equal to 0 and minus of x when x is less than 0. That is how you define absolute x. Remember this as we move forward. This is first part. Second, now let us consider that the value of x is extremely large, right? Now if, now that is the second condition, if x approaches positive infinity or x approaches negative infinity, that means extremely large value, then the constant or these numbers 3 over x, uh, these are negligible, right? So 3 over x or 1 over x square are, are approaching 0. You get the point? They are very, very small. They are approaching 0, correct? Since they are approaching 0, so for x approaching large value, we can reduce this function as approximately equals to x minus 3 divided by 
absolute x. This is when x approaches plus or minus infinity. That means when x is extremely large, 3 over large number is 0, 1 over large number is 0, square root of 1 is 1. So 1 times absolute x is absolute x. So that is kind of very important to understand at this stage. Now we have two scenarios. One is when we are considering what happens when x approaches large positive value, right? And what happens when x approaches large negative value? So we'll consider both. So when x approaches negative infinity, in that case, absolute x is equal to what? It is a large number, right? So when it is a large negative number, absolute x is minus x. When x approaches large positive infinity, then absolute x is equals to plus x. Do you see that? And therefore, we have two different equations to work with. And the equations are f of x equals to x minus 3 over, when you are approaching minus infinity, I write minus x here. And f of x equals to x minus 3 over x, when x is approaching large positive. This is because absolute x is a piecewise function, right? Since absolute x is a piecewise function, you have to always split it into two different pieces to solve, correct? So at this stage, you could also write like this, that f of x could be written as, as two pieces, correct? And that is your piece one, right? So, so that is, I think, a better way. Let me write like that. So we could say this is x minus 3 over x when x is greater than or equal to 0 and is x minus 3 over minus x when s less 0. So that is how you can redefine your function, uh, and especially when x is very, very large, when x is approaching positive or negative infinity, since we neglected these values, right? So that is what we are looking into. Now, if x is very large negative value, right, in that case, what do you get? You get horizontal asymptote, so this f of x is approaching minus 1. And in this case, f of x is approaching, when x is very large, plus 1. Do you see that? So we have two horizontal asymptotes. On the left side, the horizontal asymptote is y equals to minus 1. And on the right side, horizontal asymptote is y equals to plus 1. So we have two different asymptotes here. So when you sketch this function, you will get two asymptotes. So let me just do, I'll just sketch the horizontal asymptotes. So on the right side, we have a horizontal asymptote on the plus side, right? So that is 1 and this is minus 1. So that is the horizontal asymptote when x approaches positive infinity. And when x approaches negative infinity, we have horizontal asymptote at minus 1. So there are two horizontal asymptotes for this particular function and these are at y equals to minus 1 and y equals to plus 1. Do you understand? So that is how you should be answering this question. I'll provide you with a link which will give you a similar questions to practice with. But I hope you have understood the concept. Thank you and all the best.